let's say hello to Lionheart Anthony Smith, who joins us right now. Anthony, how are you? I'm good, Ariel. How are you? Oh, it is a pleasure. And you, you did say at the end of last week's interview, I'll talk to you on Monday before you disappear for a few months. So I appreciate you being a man of your word, and I'm happy that you're back home. And, and I think I see that you're joined by some company over there. So it's great to see that you're with your family as well. Um, if, if, if I can ask right off the top, how is your hand feeling? Uh, it, it's, it's not good. It's uh, swollen like a softball. And uh, actually, my fiance and my kids are taking me to my doctor's appointment right now. And we're going to go see how bad it is. Okay. Are you in a lot of pain? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's probably the worst broken hand I've ever had. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we'll see when we get there and see what the x-rays look like. And how many broken hands have you had? Uh, this would be like my sixth or seventh. Wow. Uh, all in the same hand? No. Uh, I think two on this hand before, but not in the same place. And then uh, I've had several surgeries on my right hand. Okay. And, and do you have any idea when exactly you broke it? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I said initially that it happened in the first round, but once I watched it back, uh, it was actually the second round. It was a, a big kind of step through uh, overhand left, and it, it must have hit him right on the top of the forehead. Uh, I know that Paul Felder actually said something in the commentary that he was hoping that I didn't hurt my hand, uh, but I, I suppose I did. Wow. Um, and when, when you when you when you actually connected, could you tell right away that it was broken? Yeah, I knew right away. Uh, as soon as I landed the punch, I, I could feel the, I felt the pop, and then I went to open and close my hand again, and it, uh, I could feel it clicking and the bones moving around. At, at, you know, I, I was kind of sort of like, you know, easing into this because I wanted you to say like, hey, you a-hole, next time, shut up. Don't doubt me. Don't question me. Don't question my heart. This is your opportunity to do that. Now we may have lost Anthony. Maybe we can uh, reconnect with him. Yeah, let's uh, try to call back Anthony because I know he's en route to uh, the hospital and I appreciate him doing this. This will probably be the last time that uh, we talk to him for quite some time uh, because he says that he wants to take a break. So you, you just heard he said that he uh, broke his hand in the second round, not the first round. Um, but this this fight went four rounds and, and you could tell early on that maybe he wasn't you know, he wasn't exactly feeling, you know, like it, it looked like he needed a couple of minutes just to, to get going. But then towards the end of the fight, he, he really put it all together. And I thought he had an amazing quote about that in the in the press release that the UFC put out. Um, they usually put out these quotes about, you know, the, the moments after a fight, they put out these quotes. And Anthony said essentially that, you know, at first he was overthinking, he was overanalyzing. And then he just said to hell with it all. I'm just going to fight. And then boom. He fights and you see what happens. He ends up submitting Alexander Gustafson and you could hear quite literally a pin drop in that arena, the Erickson Globe on, on Saturday because everyone, it, 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 I wasn't there, but it reminded me a lot of the, the vibe that we heard uh, when, when Alex got knocked out by Rumble Johnson. Let's see if he is back. Anthony, are you there? Yeah, sorry about that, Ariel. We're driving through some batteries. Apparently. No, no problem at all. Again, I appreciate you doing this. So uh, I, I was saying I, I wanted to give you the opportunity to shove it in my face for, you know, for questioning whether or not this was the right decision. If you'd like to do that, I'm, I'm game. No, that's all right, man. I told you before that I, I could tell that your that your worry was 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 from a genuine and it was from a good place. It wasn't saying that I wasn't prepared or that I wasn't good enough. I, I, I think you just. Honestly, it felt like you were just worried that I was jumping back in too soon. Yes. Uh, which I'll never, I'll never get mad that someone's worried about me more as a person, not not necessarily saying I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? So I'm good with it, man. I, I was never offended. Uh, now that the fight is over, because I understand like when you're approaching the fight and preparing for the fight, it, it's a different mindset. But now that the fight is actually over, could you tell us, were you doubting yourself? Did you feel a little different considering how you felt after that Jones fight? No, no, not at all. I felt really, really good. Uh, training camp went well. You know, I, I, I had some uh, some bumps and bruises that I had to deal with kind of through the training camp, but it, it wasn't anything that I'm not used to dealing with. You know, I, I kind of have some 
some chronic injuries that that I've kind of put off to the side, and I and I haven't let myself have any time to to get those things taken care of. But you know, maybe this broken hand is a blessing in disguise. You know, no matter what I want or or what the UFC wants or or whatever, I I don't have a choice. I have to take I have to take a break and get this fixed. So I might as well get the other stuff fixed as well. It, it did seem, as I was saying when we were trying to reconnect with you, that. At the beginning of the fight, it took you some time to, to get going. And there was a moment even when you were looking over to your corner. And I think the broadcast crew was wondering what was going on. Do you remember that sequence? And why were you doing that? Um, you know, I've never done that before. I, I think I was just tuned in to what they were saying. And, I don't, you know, for people that have never been in, the, uh, in that arena, it is insanely loud. Uh, and, and, I mean, honestly, part of it's because there's 18,000 people there. But it's really, really tall and it's just so loud in there. So I, I could catch what Mark was saying, but I couldn't quite catch the end of it. Uh, so I would just look over and it's sometimes it's a little easier to understand what he's saying if you can maybe try to read his lips. Uh, so I, yeah, I don't know. I've never done that before. Uh, probably is not the smartest thing to do now looking back at it. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I remember you telling me that you didn't have a game plan. You were just going in there to fight and then I saw you looking at your corner. So I wasn't sure if you were trying to tell them something or or maybe you did actually have a game plan and, and what you told me on Monday wasn't 100% accurate. No, no, there was there was no solid game plan. But I'm still going to listen to the the advice and the instruction of my coaches. You know, that's never going to change. So most of those instructions that they give during the fight, it, it, they're kind of on the fly adjustments. You know, so if I'm doing something that to me seems like it's working or, or you know, something that I could score with and, and he wants to make an adjustment to it, then he's absolutely going to do that. And I think that that's I think that the fight went perfect. You know, it wasn't the prettiest thing in the world, but for me that's exactly what i wanted i wanted to go in and i wanted to feel him out and 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 kind of problem solve on the fly uh and that's kind of why i started a little bit slow and i and i had to work out of you know whatever bs i was dealing with from the john thing you know i, I kind of started it similar where i was watching too much and I, and, and i was being you know defensively sound but i really wasn't letting it go but some of that's alex too you know you can feel in there that he's he's setting traps so you on top of trying to figure out what he's doing and defending it you know you, you got to try to figure out the puzzle that that, that, he's, that he's got in front of you as well the the broken hand is the left correct yeah how much did that affect after you broke it in the second round third and fourth obviously you win in the fourth but how much did you have to actually change your attack because of it uh a little a little bit you know i still i still threw it uh, just so that he didn't know that it was injured. I didn't want him to, know, to, to think that he could just wade in without having any, with only having one weapon up top to deal with. So, you know, I actually landed a couple of really nice body shots with it afterwards that were extremely, <laughs> extremely painful. Uh, but I wasn't able to land the check hooks like I wanted to and, and, and really get my jab going. So I just had to kind of feint it. But, uh, you know, I, I, I wish I could make an excuse and say that it changed the whole game, but it really didn't. You know, I just kept throwing it. Just curious, did you tell your corner that you broke your hand in between rounds? I told Mark Montoya okay. uh, right away, and he and he said, all right, well, I guess we're throwing elbows. <laughs> I said, no, nah, I'll just keep throwing it. And he just kind of looked at me like, all right, whatever. Have you ever experienced, I mean, 18,000 is pretty unique, but it was so quiet in there when he tapped. It was amazing. It was like no one was actually in the arena. Have you ever experienced like a, a like a fun, it, it's just, it must be a weird feeling. You're ecstatic, you're over the moon, and the whole place just becomes dead silent. Yeah, you know, I didn't really feel that ecstatic feeling afterwards. I mean, obviously I was really, really happy and really relieved that, that it all worked out and that I was able to do it. But uh, honestly, I, I kind of felt bad for him. You know, that, that's why I rolled him over and I wanted to, to have a few words with him before the, the commission and the doctors and all those other people came in. Uh, I, I could hear, the, like, the silence was just insane, you know, going from how loud it was to the, the entire place. Like, it, it was just, it was insane. And it, it, this, the silence is sadness, you know, and, the, and that sucks. You know, it, it sucks for him. It sucks for his family and his team. Uh, but... You know, I, I got stuff to do and, and, and my family's got to eat and I got a goal I got to accomplish. So I got to put that stuff behind me, but it, it doesn't mean that I'm not human. Did you feel like his announcement took away from your victory? No, no, not really. You know, if, if he was going to do it and, that, and that's what he wanted to do, 
I don't think that he could have picked a better place than in front of his his hometown and his country and, and you know and essentially his arena. Uh, I don't know where else he would have done it, you know. And, and so I I don't hold that against him. I I think it definitely it, it took away from it a little bit, but there's nothing that I'm bitter about or, or that I'm upset about. You know, it's just how the game goes. It's kind of similar how Anthony Johnson retired. You know, after his fight with Cormier. I, you know, I think that. When, when it's time, it's time. If that's how you feel, uh, and just do it. I noticed because I was watching everything after the fact, and so you go from like the in cage interview to backstage to you know the ESPN Plus post show to the press conference, and it seemed almost by the time you got to the press conference, you were like, wait a second, like. It, it, Losing to me shouldn't mean that you're done. Losing to me shouldn't be that you're like some sort of gatekeeper slash, you know, journeyman. And so it was interesting to see the way your mind was working throughout that, that you know, that, that, that car wash, so to speak. And by the end, at least to me, it felt like you're like, wait, hold up. Like this, this shouldn't be something that you, you, you're embarrassed about, that you feel the need to walk away from the sport. Is that kind of how you felt at the end? Like how the narrative was, was, was changing? Like Gustafson can't hang with Anthony Smith. It's time to go. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 exactly how it happened. You know, at the beginning, I was I was kind of sad for him because I feel like he still got a lot to give, and I still think that he he still has a lot of fight left in him. I, I don't feel like he le- he lost a step at all. Uh, and then so as I was doing the interviews, you know, I, I was kind of saying that and, and hoping that he sticks around and, and rethinks it. And then, like you said, by the end of it, it was like. Wait a second! Like, are, are you guys saying he's retiring because I suck so bad that he can't beat me? Because that's how it feels. Uh, and 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 I just don't think that that's the case. And I, I don't know when I'm going to get any respect. You know, at, at this point, like before, I never cared, but it's getting a little bit frustrating. You know, like all the guys that I'm beating are old, washed-up guys, and then the Vulcan thing was a fluke, and then you know, then I proved everyone right that you know I sucked and I didn't beat John Jones, and then. You know what's the excuse now? You know, I mean, Gus, his, his mind wasn't in it, his heart wasn't in it, and he didn't try hard enough. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what I got to do to to beat someone and then finally just say uh, maybe he's just good. So even after this one, you still feel like you're not getting that respect as one of the best light heavyweights in the world? Uh, I don't know. You know, I I haven't really been paying attention too much to the like. I guess you can kind of get the read on that stuff like from social media and, and how the media members talk about you and how the articles are written and I haven't really dug that deep into there. Uh, I'm just happy to be home so you know I don't know but you know the, the the way that I felt after the fight that's kind of the vibe I was getting. Is the John Jones fight finally out of your system like that embarrassment that feeling you were talking about last last Tuesday uh, on the program do you feel like it's finally gone now? No, not completely. I think that I think that I got some of it out for sure. I feel a lot better. You know, I slept okay last night, so that's good. Uh, I I think that that's always going to be there a little bit, but I think that I I proved something to myself. You know, I said that on your show that I wanted to put in a performance that that I could be proud of, and, and I'm really proud of that one. And and I think that I you know how, you know how Alex said that the John fight was because of the injury and. And, and, and all that stuff, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's 100% true, but you're never going to know until you get back in there, you know. So I was saying that I don't know what happened. I couldn't pull the trigger and, and I'm better than that. But, you know, to, to be able to go in there and then have a better performance and and kind of prove to myself, like, all right, like what you're saying is correct. Like what you feel is right, that you are better than that. and You just didn't show it. So I, I do feel better. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot of things I didn't do and that I, I got to get better at. Um, so, but I don't think I'll ever be happy. I, I think that until I win the world title, I think I'm always going to kind of feel like that. How do you think you would have felt if it didn't go your way, considering how you felt going into the fight because of John? Like if you had now lost two in a row, how do you think you would have reacted to that? Well, I, th- I think it would have depended on the performance. Okay. You know, I, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't focused on the win. So I had the fight gone the way that it went and I didn't finish him in the fourth. And the fifth round looks similar to the first and the second. Uh, I mean, in my mind, I think I was up two to one. Going- if you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell. And leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video. And tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.